Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man who steps back inside the Octagon UFC Vegas number 51, Kevin. As always, man, uh, appreciate time. How's things been, man? For sure, man. Appreciate you. Uh, things are going really well, really well, man. You know, I was looking at your uh, Instagram feed, and there's one post you had that just stuck out to me. Not It's it's kind of fire-related, but in a way, maybe it's more about after the fight. You said, 14 days till I trade these abs in for a dub, a milkshake, and a cheeseburger, which made me think, is milkshake and cheeseburger the go-to after fight meal for you? Yeah, I mean, it's like... like um Burger, milkshake, and french fries are like my favorite meal ever. They can be to go to always. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, man, and I can't wait. I've I've been on a diet hardcore for about seven weeks. So yeah, man. Well, what's the hardest part about the diet for you? Just not, you know what I mean? Like I, I like to be able to eat anything. I'm I'm the type of person that's like. I don't even want things until I can't have it, you know, like if, if I couldn't, I mean, if I could eat whatever, like I probably wouldn't eat that bad, but it's just the fact that I can't have it. It upsets me. You know, of course, the last time we saw you was back in January. Was that just kind of a situation of, uh, you know, once you got back to, back to, uh, to Missouri, it was right back into the gym to kind of, uh, you know, get that, that chip off your shoulder a little bit. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't I haven't stopped training for like the last year really. <laughs> Was there any takeaways from that last fight that kind of have uh, evolved into this camp? Uh, I mean, I think uh, I showed a lot of improvements. I, I I'm, I'm pretty happy with my performance. Obviously, you know, uh, didn't go didn't go the way I, I'd like. Uh, three days notice, you know, what are you going to do? Um, but uh, I think I showed a lot of improvements, and I. You know, believe that, uh, you know, if I go out there and fight just like I did, I'll do extremely well and I'm going to do even better. So can't wait. If in the future you get offered a fight on three days notice, would, would, is your mindset different? No, <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, I need to get, I need to get a win under my belt. You know I mean? I, I just lost two back to back. So, uh, I, I, w- I was going to be smart this one. You know, uh, I would have taken a short notice fight immediately, but uh, I get another couple wins. Let's go, man. I don't care. I'm always down. I'm always in the gym, so it doesn't matter, you know. You know, obviously you're a veteran of this game. Uh, Is it one of those things that no matter what the result is of the fight, that automatically becomes rearview mirror pretty much just a couple days after the fight's over? Uh, I mean, uh, they all have their ups and downs, you know, uh, but, you know, when you step in on a uh, short notice like that, you know, I mean, I, I think I performed really well. You know, there's nothing nothing to be uh, ashamed of. Uh, if I had have performed that well, you know, yeah, I probably would be a little, little bit upset and a little hurt about it. But, uh, no. In terms of where you were at as a martial artist back when you made your UFC debut and to where you're at now, what's the biggest difference you see in yourself? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a lot more calm. Uh, uh, it's like uh, I know now. You know, like I mean, it's like a, there's a lot of like energy and wondering how to how to do it. You know, before and I don't know. I feel like I've just found my style, and I uh, uh, I'm more comfortable in there. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, I, I've I've been at, at, at the pinnacle of the sport, you know, a few times, uh, uh my, you know, uh, it, it's not as earth shaking as an event. Um, I've been here before, so that's just allowing me to, uh, be more calm, more collected and, and, um, more strategic, you know, uh, I used to just go out there and just fight fight people, you know? And, uh, I think now, now I'm setting things up a lot better. In terms of, of being calm, is, is that just something you've kind of had to battle throughout your career? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think being calm, I've had to battle my whole life. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, uh, I, I think my last fight was like the first time I've actually been like, uh, 
really like comfortable and, and just fine in there. And uh, yeah, man. So I'm really excited to go out and, and do the same thing with full camp. And, and of course, you're taking on a, a opponent here, kind of similar. You know, he's uh, with having four fights uh, in the UFC. A, a, as you look look at Al Tang, what what is what sticks out to you about uh, what you're expecting to see from him? Yeah, uh, well, uh, he is six five. I mean, sorry, sorry, five. <laughs> that is not six five. Good lord, uh, oh man. Uh, he is five six five five, something mm-hmm. like that, I believe. So uh, definitely have a good height height advantage. Uh, also, I believe his reach is like sixty six inches. So uh, I'm like seventy. 73 and a half something like that so i got like seven seven inches of reach on them seven and a half um quite a bit of height on them uh you know i mean i plan on just jabbing them to death staying really long uh use use my god-given attributes to my you know uh ability uh for this weight class you know most i feel like most people at this weight are a lot of people are around his size. Uh, and so, yeah, man, I just plan on being really long and strong and uh, staying jab heavy and one to one and people to death, you know? I, I think one of the things of when we're talking about a, a height and, and reach advantage, I think we always naturally kind of look at the, the positives of that when you are the fighter that, that has that, that longer advantage. Is there any big negatives for you? I mean, is, is it simply an equation of, okay, I know this guy's got to get inside and, and he's probably going to push some things and, and maybe potentially take some chances. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I believe that's how it has to be. Uh, if I, if I do my job correctly, uh, I, I will go out there. I will violently control range. I'll pick him apart and I'll set up my finish. Um, by, by doing that, uh, he has to run into something. Uh, you, you know, he can either stay outside of my range or he can come inside. And so, uh, every chance he, he, is going to come inside. I'm going to hit him with something, let him run into something, have him be thinking about something. Uh, he will get desperate and, you know, we'll have to go, go from there. But as long as I keep my feet moving well and my jab hand strong, we're good to go. For you, is this fight game more mental than it is physical? Uh, I mean, I, I think it's a, a, a twist up, you know, on both sides, uh, I heard like a, a quote a long time ago that like uh, the the training is ninety percent mental and ten percent physical, and then the fight is ninety percent mental and ten percent physical. Uh, I I don't, I don't know a hundred percent on that, but I think that seems to be pretty accurate. Um, it, it's not mentally hard. I mean, the hardest thing about your day in and day out is getting up and going to the gym when you don't want to, you know what I mean? But when you've been doing this for 15 years, that's just kind of what you do. So, uh, so yeah, mentally it's not, it's not that difficult. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it it can be, it can be difficult to get in the fight, but I think as I'm getting older, more, more seasoned in the game, I'm realizing that mean it's just, don't overthink go out there and do it that you know like go out there and jab them get your front hand pop and move your feet and it's gonna it's gonna work out you know on fight day are you superstitious man i think uh after so many fights it's really hard to be superstitious you know uh-huh. like I, I i a million years ago i had some stuff i used to do and then like you know it just happened you know i mean i was so long ago no i'm not uh i just like to wake up and have a good time you know (laughs) i I just i remember it was a couple years ago aaron pico had said to me he's like even going back my wrestling days he goes on on competition day i will not step on a red line a lot of red lines around (laughs) i guess (laughs) he's like like, if you're you're on like basketball courts and stuff that makes sense yeah it's okay yeah, but I, but then some guys will say, you know what? I probably do the same stuff before every fight day, but I just don't realize it. Yeah, I mean, I for sure put on music and dance at some point. Okay, every fight. So I mean, that's not a superstition. That's just how what I do when I'm having a good time. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> all right. I mean, let, let's just say we're having a good time. What, what's the? Uh, is there a go to song that you're going to pop up? Uh, I don't know. It depends. I think. Uh, 
I, I listen. I like to listen to a lot of James Brown. Fight okay. Day. A lot of James Brown. A lot of funk. You know. That's awesome. That's awesome. Of course, everyone's going to be able to see your fight here. UFC Vegas number 51, of course, on ESPN+. Plus. Kevin, as always, man, I appreciate time. Of course, uh, let me know that you can find on social media. Anything else you want to mention, man? Uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, follow me, Kevin Kroom underscore UFC on all the things. Uh, big shout out to my team, James Krause, uh, Glory MMA, my management company, Iridium, Joe Wooster, Jason House. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having for having me on. And uh, heck yeah, guys. Thank you.